Welcome back to Namibia Connects. Uh, towards the end of the 2022 academic year, NAST and various local and international partners secured funding from the Info Range project. The project is valued at approximately $52 million and is funded by the German Federal Ministry for Education and Research. Its main objective is to enhance the efficiency of rangeland-based livestock value chains through the use of machine learning and digital technologies. Dr. Colin Stanley, the acting Deputy Vice Chancellor of Research, Innovation and Partnerships serves uh, as the NAST InfoRange Principal Investigator and joins us in studio to tell us more about uh, this initiative. Dr. Stanley, thank you so much for making time to come through. No, thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Yeah, there were a lot of big words that I read out there, machine learning, digital technologies. Uh, in a nutshell, when we talk about the InfoRange project, yeah. what exactly is it in the most simplest uh, form? Yes, I will start in, uh, simplifying it by the info that is on in front of the info, uh, range. Mm -hmm. uh, that info, it's uh, abbreviation of information. Yes. As we all know in this era what, that we are in now, we live in the information age or mm -hmm. digital transformation age. And uh, there is a deliberate uh, annotation to information. As we know in the basics of databases 101, we talk about data, but mm -hmm. data alone does not give you a lot of meaning. You cannot make sense out of data. But the moment you put, uh, let's say we take your name and we say that, okay, you are an employee of NPC and you live here, so we have information about you. So now this is information about the rangeland livestock production and mm -hmm. to increase efficiency. So we want information on rangeland-based livestock production because we know that once we have this information, we can help us to make better decisions. Yeah. So that's why you hear the word machine learning. Machine learning needs to learn based on data, yeah. based on information. We're talking about emerging digital technologies. Those also need uh, uh, information. And we are not only talking about information in the digital world, also the information that the the rangeland uh, livestock farmers have been using over the years. Mm. So in a nutshell, it's just yeah. on how best to use the information on rangeland livestock production to make uh, mm. to make a living out to make a living out, out of it. So, so in other words, it's it's a merge between these new technologies and the traditional ways of of, exactly. of, of farming. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think maybe, uh, before we get into more about you know what the project is about. Uh, one of the interesting things that perhaps people are asking themselves at home is, you know, this 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 research funding that always comes from outside yes. uh, uh, of the out of out of the country is well, why can it not be localized? There a reason why you know the government or other local stakeholders cannot step up and and, and put this funding down for the importance of you know of of, you know, of research and, and getting new information. Talk to us a bit about the the funding module. Of, uh, of 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 research uh, yeah. as it stands now. Yes, uh, to, for for you to do research, uh, you need funding. Mm -hmm. It's an expensive uh, endeavor, uh, in social long term endeavor. For example, if you look at this, it is uh, community based research that you need to travel to the community. So Absolutely. obviously, we're talking about transport costs, the workshop, uh, accommodation. Mm -hmm. People need to eat, and then also you need to also. Uh, cater for the communities that are working with you on that research. So there are morals on how it is done in our country. There is the uh, Commission on Research, mm. Science and Technology, uh, NCRST. Mm -hmm. So they uh, supposed to regulate or they do that, regulate and, and support research in the country. So there is always calls that comes out from NCRST. Uh, sometimes it even requires bilateral to, for our Namibian researchers to work with uh, other countries. Yeah. So, and then also universities, you know, they get uh, money from the government, the subvention that they get, and then it's up to the universities to, to allocate the funds for research. But yes, we, we have over the years seen that the, we have to do more to really support our research. Uh, it, it's through uh, supporting that we will see the, the output because you want the research to go at another level, mm -hmm. which is now commercialization, developing products that the communities can use so that you can see the rewards, not only for the scientific output, where you only publish papers, but we want to see tangible outcome from the research Absolutely. that we do. That yeah. we do. Now, NAST is collaborating with uh, several institutions on the project. What role is NAST actually playing? And perhaps also uh, yeah. talk to us about the roles being fulfilled by the partners. 
Yes, uh, as you see, this is a, a big project if you look at the monetary value of the 52 mm. million. But then uh, one I interesting aspect is we have to talk about other stakeholders. For example, there's a stakeholder from Germany that is looking at transdisciplinary and, and the engagement and coordination of the project. Because if you want to, as you said, imagine technologies in a traditional way of doing things, mm -hmm. there are traditional ways, the farmers, the herders, the agricultural experts. So from NAST, we yeah. do have uh, the Department of Agriculture also working on the governance of, of, of rangeland. So we have experts, we have uh, Dr. Hilma Amuelo, who's leading that work. And then from my side, I come from computer science. So mm -hmm. we look at the computer science aspect, but more specifically on co-design, co-creating yeah. technologies with the communities. And then we, in Namibia, we also have the Namibia Nature Foundation. As you know, the work of nature, environment uh, aspects. So they are also really working on this project to help us mapping the stakeholders uh, and, and land use uh, of our uh, of, of our, all our stakeholders. And that's a very important aspect when it comes to research. It's mm -hmm. a simple thing I, I might touch on. If you have mapped your people that you're working with, for example, the communities, we are working in Kavango East, is one of the research sites. Mm -hmm. Just my map, by plotting on the map, I will be able to know how far are the distances of these communities. If I call for a meeting, I should appreciate how far are the communities traveling to attend my meeting. Perhaps. I should take a central location for me to conduct that uh, that workshop. So they, they are doing that for us. Uh, so we have people also from Kenya. As you know, Kenya is yeah. one of the countries that really also do well in livestock. And also they have the similar challenges of dry, dry lands, similar to Namibia. So we have the University of Nairobi also working with us. There is also a IT company called Comfess in, in Kenya that is also working with the University of uh, Castle, New Uni Castle in Germany, they are working on the machine learning uh, that you mentioned earlier in our project. So it's a whole team of different entities that are working together. So the, the other one in Germany is this uh, institute that is for agriculture, that mm. uh, research institute that does now the transdisciplinary engagement and coordination. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, if it's, well, approximately six months into the the project, can yeah. you just provide the the progress thus far, yeah. and uh, perhaps also you know how the people that you're working with on the ground have uh, yeah. uh, are taking on this thing? Have they accepted it? Is it something that they yeah. have embraced and supporting? Yeah. So just to complete the stakeholder mapping, so we we have to know. Uh, who we are engaging with at which level. Mm. So we have three levels of engagement. We have obviously the headers, the, the people that are on the ground or the livestock. And then we have the community stakeholders, those that are, you know, in our communities, we know we have uh, systems that are properly set up, the chiefs. And then also at the higher level, we, we have uh, our technical working group that is advising us on our research. Mm. So we have set up these uh, different entities. Uh, now we also have done our scoping uh, trip with all our research sites uh, to emphasize we are working in Kavango East and also ASAP and also in Aminus uh, constituency. Yeah. So we have identified sites. So we went for scoping to, to get the buying of the communities because it's sometimes we researchers have our own milestones that we need to deliver and then we look also at the communities what is their their expectation what do they want to be included in the project for example we have picked up from our first trip uh, livestock marketing was not a core deliverable from our side but the community said that uh, we really want uh, livestock marketing mm. to be to be part of the project outcomes. At times, the communities don't know what is the current price. In Kavango East, that was surprising for us. The, the market price of their livestock, they are not aware of that. Imagine if you are not aware of your commodity. Absolutely. You can sell it for any price. Peanuts, that, yeah. Yeah. So they want an information system that will really give them up to date. And then livestock theft. I mean, uh, this is also something that came out is critical from all the communities that we have said, worked with. So that is the first uh, phase that we are busy with, also to identify the evolution of the information, the status quo of the information. How did the information evolve around knowing where the best grazing area is, or where the livestock 
are is what are the challenges in rangeland so the information mm. that they've been using over the years so that we can identify the information needs gaps and then we come now to develop the applications that needs to be developed uh, but we do it with them with the communities called co-design yeah. approach and then we can uh, move to the machine learning uh, you know and we are also doing satellite images to really oh. understand the grazing area so that we can do this uh, machine learning that can help people to make informed decisions. Uh, at the end of our project, it's a five year, we are going up to 2026. We want to also make sure that the applications that we developed uh, are really making the government officials to make informed decisions. Absolutely. So uh, it's not only just developing the application and mm -hmm. then we are out. We want uh, ownership, we want to look at other stakeholders or say, uh, what is the appetite to buy in these uh, software applications that have been developed? How do we sustain the software application? Because yeah. there will be maintenance that needs to be uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. So, and, and the good thing is we are looking what they've been done in Kenya, for example, on drones and also on uh, uh, air techs, uh, putting trackers on, on the animals. Yeah. Uh, this is not a new concept if you think about it. You know, in the olden days in our villages, you find one goat, uh, the furbok. Yeah, with the hell, you, a, a, a bell, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> a, what's a tracking device or something to know uh, where the, the location, animals, the the animals location is mm -hmm. and, and why you have taken that specific animal. And so we are looking at if we can put uh, tracking devices to also the farmers to be aware of their livestock. It's, a, it's for them, it's, it's, it's a livelihood. Mm. And the same for your, for your valuable items uh, in the cities, you always put trackers, for example, yeah. and you want to know where's your vehicle. They would also want to know where's my livestock and with the area where they are, is there enough grazing? Is there mm. enough water? Uh, what are the other challenges, the wildlife uh, in that area? Absolutely. So, so the, if they can have this on their mobile applications, we believe it will help them to do better farming. Mm. When you talk about uh, mobile devices, are we talking about smartphones? So will this uh, app be compatible with what they call a Tamagotchi? <laughs> <laughs> so, so we look at uh, all approaches. We are aware that to, for you to develop such a dev application, you might need a smart uh, device. But there are several uh, options that you could do it with your Tamakoshi. For example, just the location information that can come uh, to your phone, or for example, even the prices that can e easily come as a text message. So there are several things that can be done with a simple mobile application. Yeah. And for those that can afford the full-fledged uh, smartphone, uh, they, they can go for that. And we, we also have done, we are busy with that now, evaluating existing uh, yeah. ICT applications. Most farmers, they do have uh, a mobile phone. Uh, we are aware that some don't have. So we, we, we will consider that aspect of Absolutely. Uh, yeah. And also network coverage. In mm. some areas, there is no mm. network. True. Yeah. They will, for example, what we learn in Kavango East, uh, the buyer will come and you hear from people, okay, they are at that location. Yeah. Because you are not uh, having update information, you move there, they've moved to the next <laughs> one. So you have lost your cost again on, on transporting your, your, your cattle. Yeah. You did yeah. mention that this is a very big project, looking at the, the money that have been injected into it. Um, are our students getting involved in this? And also, we, because there's always that thing of, um, people say that, you know, they're not getting enough outside exposure. Now they're getting on the job. Um, experience. Uh, how has the experience been so far in terms of their involvement? No, it's, it's actually very well and, and uh, I mean I can always reflect uh, on the students now as I went through that journey. My work was also working with communities and uh, we have uh, in this project, we have uh, from the Namibian side, we have three uh, PhD scholarships. Mm. These are full funded tuition fees and the allowances for upkeep, so fully funded uh, scholarship. And, uh, and, and it's part of our mandate to really educate uh, the, the, the nation yeah. and, and really to educate them through applied uh, research. Mm. Uh, they are there with the communities. They can see if there are solutions, how they are impacting the communities to make better decisions. So this is part of, of our 
DNA to, to really have students on projects. So this is really something good. You can say it's on the job uh, training. If that PhD graduate, he have already know how to work with communities. And if you work with communities, it's a broader scope of, of not only focusing on your scientific writing or findings, but also on how do you engage and make sure the community's ways of doing things, their way of constructing knowledge. We know our communities, the knowledge is not written, is usually verbally pass on, yeah, yeah, pass on, pass on. Mm. And how do you infuse that into your technology development? So it's really a broader uh, oh. scholarly achievement. Mm. For, for I think that. the commendable thing uh, many would agree with the fact that you are not just it's not a it's not a one way uh, approach. You are also learning from them and applying it. You know as you go you know the, with go on with the project. Uh, and lastly, for individuals who are interested in finding more about the InfoRange project, yeah. uh, uh, where can they go? Who do they need to speak to? Yes, they can speak to me also, and then we have a, a website page on our, on our NAS page, and they can also talk to our stakeholders, uh, NNF, mm -hmm. they, they also have uh, people that are leading that part. So from our NAS page, you can contact uh, us directly, there is contact details, so you will find info range uh, uh, on our web uh, website. I uh, hope you're also making use of our, our 11 radio stations, because we have a very vast, yes, a vast yes, reach. Yes, yes, yeah. just to, I mean, we work quite also with the councillors, for, for example, Absolutely. In uh, my region, they announce it on radio, and we have picked up that once uh, once this is announced on the radio, we have good turn up of the communities, and they are really eager to work with us and say that we really want this to have tangible results, uh, not one of your projects where you just uh, come and then no no results for yeah. for, for the communities. Absolutely, yeah. Dr. Stanley, thank you so much for this awesome conversation that we've just had, uh, and uh, all the best with you and the rest of the team. No, thank you, thank all you right, so brilliant. much. Brilliant, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, it's always important for a city or town to be prepared for events that are sometimes unpredictable, hence an effective